In this video, I want to talk about some of the problems with having serially correlated errors. The first of those problems is that when you sort of estimate your model, the standard errors which eViews or Stata actually provides as default are in fact wrong. So unless you tell it that you do have serially correlated errors, the standard errors which are calculated there will be assuming that we have serially uncorrelated errors, and in fact, generally they will be too small. So because of that, the sort of T and F statistics if you form, we can't then use that for inference. Luckily, there is a way to correct for these sort of standard errors um, in the presence of serially correlated errors, and it, in most software programs, it's very easy to do, and that's using what we call New E West standard errors, which take into account the fact that the error itself might be serially correlated. And then once we correct the standard errors for the presence of serially correlated errors, we can then sort of proceed as normal for inference. So then we can use T and F statistics and we can then sort of formulate some sort of hypothesis about what's going on in the population. But the problem is that if we don't actually do that, our standard errors are probably going to be too small, which is going to lead us to think that we're more confident in our results than we actually should be. The second way which serially correlated errors affects our results is that OLS estimators are no longer blue. And that's in itself a problem, right? Because it turns out that there are other estimators or other linear unbiased estimators which are better than least squares. In other words, they get closer to the true population parameter more of the time. And it turns out that the solution to the second problem is to just use GLS. And sort of in principle, we don't actually always know the exact form of the serial correlation, so we actually end up using feasible generalized least squares. And the benefit of using generalized least squares as opposed to using sort of just correcting the standard errors is that we're actually addressing the root of the problem. We're actually gonna transform our model to a situation for which then using ordinary least squares on that transform sample will then be blue. So that's kind of a better way of dealing with the problem than just correcting the standard errors because in principle on that transform system, our estimators will get closer to the true population parameters more of the time. Just a quick note on the sort of naming of generalized least squares. So generalized least squares encompasses all those sort of models which correct for sort of both serial correlation and or for heteroscedasticity. So it's concerned with situations when we don't actually have exactly spherical errors or we don't just have um, serially uncorrelated and errors of constant variance. So we call both these classes of model GLS, but it turns out that the name sort of weighted least squares is something which we only apply to a sort of specific example of heteroscedasticity. Um, we don't use weighted least squares to correct for serially correlated errors. Anyway, I thought I'd just include a point there about the naming. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we actually go about forming these GLS estimators.